Hello and welcome back to today's recording on the common presentations that you may face as an ENT SHO. Today we're going to be talking about periorbital or preceptal cellulitis and orbital cellulitis. When dealing with these sorts of patients, it's important to remember a few things. First thing is that cellulitis is a skin infection and they can affect the skin around the eyelids and the eyes themselves. And in terms of ENT, this can be the result of a preceding sinusitis and this can rapidly spread and affect the orbital contents and can cause loss of vision and even death. It's important when you're assessing patients to differentiate between preceptal cellulitis and orbital cellulitis. So you've got to think about the key differences between the two presentations. The first is chemosis, which is swelling of the conjunctiva around the eye. And the next is patients that develop painful or reduced eye movements. They may have altered pupils and they may experience visual disturbances. So all of these are as a result of involvement of the optic nerve. And then finally, they may develop proptosis or bulging of the eye as a result of increased pressure behind the eye. So when assessing these sorts of patients, we use something called the Chandler's classification, which is a classification from one to five, and it differentiates between the different types of orbital cellulitis. So classification one is preceptal cellulitis with inflammation and edema anterior to the orbital septum. Now moving on is onto the different classifications of orbital cellulitis, and this is two through five. So the simplest form is type 2, which is inflammation behind the eye, or cellulitis behind the eye. In type 3, you get a collection of pus, or a subperiosteal abscess, between the periosteum and the lamina papyracea. And then in 4, you've got a collection of purulent material behind the orbit itself. And then finally, in 5, is when you develop a cavernous sinus thrombosis as a result of posterior extension of the infection. And this can extend through the superior ophthalmic veins and can cause cavernous sinus thrombosis. When you're examining these patients, it's important to check for any signs of ophthalmoplegia or double vision or pain on eye movements, any proptosis or bulging of the eye, any change in visual acuity. You will also want to check for any changes to color vision, and this can be done using uh, Ishihara charts that can be brought up on your phone. Uh, then if possible, you want to examine the eye itself. Um, so if you have an ophthalmoscope available, you can have a look at the back of the retina and look for any signs of engorgement of the retinal veins as a result of reduced drainage from the orbit itself. You'll also want to do a nasendoscopy to look for any signs of nasal congestion. And finally, you want to perform a full neurological examination. In terms of your immediate management of these patients, uh, admit to all suspected patients with preceptal or periorbital cellulitis for observation overnight. This varies slightly between whether the patient is an adult or a child. You want them jointly with ophthalmology in adults if they've not already been discussed uh, by A&E, and then jointly with ophthalmology and pediatrics in children. They'll need to be started on intravenous antibiotics according to your trust guidelines. And then you'll also want to start them on nasal decongestants and nasal steroids. In our trust, we uh, start the patients on optimized spray or drops to both nostrils three times a day for seven days. And then two drops of betanazole to both nostrils twice a day for three to four weeks. You will want to start them on nasal douching to fully irrigate the uh, nostrils and sinuses. You want to make sure that the patients have suitable pain control. And then finally, you'll want to start any patients with suspected orbital cellulitis. You want to start them on a CT brain, sinus and orbits with contrast to look for any signs of venous sinus thrombosis. Patients with any abscess or other suspected collection will need to be nil by mouth. Be sure to discuss these patients with your senior as these Patients may require uh, admission for theatre and surgical drainage overnight. So be sure to keep them nil by mouth. Additional useful resources include ENT SHO and the Oxford Handbook of ENT and Head and Neck Surgery. Thank you, everybody. This concludes our talk on periodontal cellulitis.